Hi everybody, it's Jen and I'm with OpenSource.com and I'm bringing you the top five articles from the past couple of weeks, December 22nd through today, January 2nd. We took a little bit of a break for the holiday and it's a brand new year, so I wanted to give you a little bit of background about what this article in this video is. Last year I started writing and recording a top five articles of the week. Um, first what I do is tally the numbers, listen to the buzz, and then I pick the top five sort of most talked about, most read articles on opensource.com. Then I write up a paragraph about what I think you need to know most about each of the articles. And finally, I record a YouTube video that you can play and listen to. There's just so much on the internet to read and in life, books, tons of places just to read, read, read. And so what we want to do here is bring you a different medium for some of our best information. So we do that through audio and video. We hope that you guys really enjoy it. It's been um, a, pa a few months now that we started doing this, and we really enjoy it. We hope you do, and we also hope that in the new year, if you would like to get this in your video stream every week, that you subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. All right, so again, I skipped last week, and um, I'm pulling um, a top five from the past couple of weeks, December 22nd through the 2nd. All right, so let's hop into it. To bid a happy farewell to 2014, we recapped the year in open source by writing best of articles that list the top stories of the year for open source news, games, hardware, software, and so much more. Four of them made our top five today, and you can see all of our best of articles in the link provided in the notes. So you might be wondering what's the fifth article, and as I mentioned, it's not a best of, also, it sits at the number one spot today, so let's hop in to find out what it is. At number five, we have most important open source news of the year. Robin Mulwick is one of our writers for the Open Source News Weekly Roundup that we do every week. In this best of article, he looks back at the top open source news stories that we highlighted in 2014. The most buzzworthy news happened in business, government, and education, while other remarkable news cropped up in places that maybe you wouldn't have expected. So check out this roundup to catch up and then maybe add opensource.com to your reader or newsy list and get our re uh, roundup every week. At number four, we have top 10 open source and business stories of 2014. <clears throat> from another best of article um, from our end of the year series, Natish Tiwari writes, business is one of the prime areas of focus on opensource.com. So naturally, we've accumulated a lot of great information over the year about tools for doing business like project management, customer management, and content management. <clears throat> We've also shown a light on the companies and business leaders across the globe who are working for open source companies, operating under transparent procedures, or leading co collaborative operations. So check out this article to get our top 10 business and open source stories that we covered in 2014. Number three, remarkable open source and Linux games in 2014. In this best of, Robin Mulwick, again, looks back at the top gaming stories that we highlighted in 2014. He talks games, platforms, engines, and hardware in this special edition from our open source and Linux weekly games roundup. At number two, best of open hardware in 2014. Straight from the first paragraph of the article, Luis Ibanez writes, Open hardware is the physical foundation of the open movement. It is through understanding, designing, manufacturing, commercializing, and adopting open hardware that we build the basis for a healthy and self-reliant community. Check out this article for his highlights of our coverage of open hardware this past year. In addition to that coverage, we also published a set of resources that explain open hardware, including an accessible definition. Then in March, we dedicated a full week to the subject, with authors from varying backgrounds writing about popular boards and their new projects. Then on March 21st, our team held an open hardware day at the office. We checked out the capabilities of a 3D printer, tinkered with an Arduino board, and flew a quadcopter copter, quad copter, mostly into things. <clears throat> Finally, at number one, we have install Linux on a used laptop. In this, our number one article of the past two weeks, and the first non-best of article of the day, Phil Shapiro writes about another of his great ideas. 
What does one do if they need a cheap laptop? What are the options? Check out Phil's guide to installing Linux on a cheap eBay laptop. That's all for this week, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me, and we hope that you have a very happy new year, and we see you next week. See ya.